Hello everybody, welcome back. Today we have another Strengths of Cheetos video on the gear ratio. Uh, and this one's going to be a nasty problem. It's ugly, I hate it, um, but it's a good problem. It's a good one for learning uh, the concepts of the gear ratio, along with uh, taking some concepts from previous videos, which we've done before on indeterminate torque loaded assembly. Uh, if you haven't seen that, you can start there. Uh, and if you also haven't seen the gear ratio video, I'd recommend watching that as well before hopping into this one because those two are going to combine to really make this problem a bit easier. Um, today, just dealing with the problem, we're going to get into theory when we're solving. Uh, and the problem goes as follows. We have two shafts, which are made of A36 steel, and each have a diameter of 25 mil, and they're connected using gears fixed to their ends. Their other ends are attached to fixed supports at A and B, and they are also supported by journal bearings at C and D, which allow for free rotation of the shaft along their axes. If a torque of 500 newtons per meter is applied to gear E as shown, determine the reactions at A and B. And it also wants us to determine the rotation at gear E. Now there's a couple things that we need to discuss before hopping into solving the problem. And the first place that we could start is pretty much this diagram right here. So I've drawn this so that visualizing what's going on is a lot easier. And this is kind of almost mandatory for this problem because of how many things are actually going on. Uh, we'll notice that 500 newton meters is being applied at gear E, which is drawn right here. And we know that because this system is fixed, we're gonna have two reactions that are produced at B and at A in order to resist this 500 newton meter torque applied. So that's what's going on with TA and TB here. So this torque here and here are both going to be acting against this 500 newton meter uh, torque in order to bring the system into equilibrium. Another important thing to know about this problem is we need to satisfy equilibrium. And the only way that we can feasibly do this is if we separate these two assemblies into their two separate shafts. So if we consider this first shaft here as one separate uh, member for analysis, we could do the same with the other member down here in order to make sure that both of these are actually satisfying conditions of equilibrium. And remember that torque is just a fancy moment. So the summation of torque for both these assemblies should be coming out to zero at the end of the day. Now, another point that I'd like to bring up before even hopping into the problem is some people might be wondering, why can't I just use the relationships from our previous gear ratio videos in order to solve this problem, such as the relationship or the ratio of torque at A over torque at B is equivalent or equal to the ratio of the radius at A to the radius at B. Probably can't, the reason why we can't do this is because we have a pretty complex system where we have multiple different points that are actually taking this torque. Thus, it's not being transferred equally throughout the system. And thus the torque developed in F based on what is being externally applied at E is not going to take on or apply to this rule up here, which is unfortunate because it would make this problem a lot easier. Now, the last point, which is a point that was previously discussed in our gear ratio videos, was that we have a reaction that's gonna be produced at the gear because of the interlock nature. We're gonna have a force that's being acting in uh, one gear as a reaction. And obviously, as the torque is being transferred to the next, you're going to produce an equal and opposite reaction in that gear. So the main takeaway from that video previously was that the torque that is being created uh, as a reaction in these gears will not be equal because the radiuses are different. However, the forces that are reacting or the reaction forces being produced from this external torque are going to be equal, which is why I've written down that the force that's developing in F is going to equal ultimately F, which is the same force that is going to be reacting in gear E as well. Now, with all of that out of the way, we can finally solve the problem. First things first, we already talked about separating these two into isolated systems. So if we looked at our first system here, which would be uh, the shaft from F to B, to satisfy this, we can say that it will be equal to zero when we have a torque at B which based on our sign convention is going to be positive. And then this force is acting in the opposite direction. 
And these are drawn arbitrarily, obviously, like we don't know which way these forces are going to be acting or these reactions are going to be acting. So arbitrarily, they're written like this, but you'll see later on that it's not really going to matter in this problem too much. Um, but based on what we've drawn, this is going to be a negative uh, rotation about that axis of the gear. So it's going to be F times the radius. Once again, torque is just a fancy moment. So we're taking force times distance here. And the distance is going to be the radius, which is 0.05 meters based on what's given. Now the second assembly, which is right here for gear E, is going to be something very similar, where based on our sign conventions, we're going to have TA, which is negative, because it is going clockwise about this axis here, based on the convention. We also have the force that's being applied times the distance away, which is that radius here of 100. So we're going to convert that right away to 0.1 meters and that nasty external torque, which is 500, and that's going to be positive new meter. Now, an important thing to do here is to see how we can simply solve this or put these equations together so that we can get away with one variable or make one variable in terms of the other. So a nice thing that we can notice with this first equation up here is if we bring TB to the other side, it's going to equal to F of 0 0.05 meters which is nice because now we can use this relationship to say, wait a minute, 2TB is equal to F times 0 0.01, right? So we can simply write that which means we can then plug it in to our equation down here. Plugging that in we are going to have 2TB plus 500. And now we can isolate for a variable, which would be TA in terms of TB, which will be negative 2TB plus 500. Now let's go back to our gear ratio video and use a nice relationship that we had when we had two interlocking gears in an assembly we have the angle of twist that's being created between the two. And it is influenced by the radius and that was derived in our previous video. We can actually get that relationship from these two gears here. If we said we had theta F over theta E, this is gonna be equal to the ratio of the radius at E over the radius of F. And we know that that's simply going to be radius of E, which is 0 0.1 meters, over F, which is 0 0.05 meters. And then solving for that, we have theta F bringing over theta E is equal to 2 theta E based on this relationship. Already just had to move some of the stuff out of the way so I could solve the rest of this. Um, now we have this relationship here that we can use this formula to plug back in. Uh, we understand that to bring both of these members back to equilibrium or back to zero at their fixed ends, there's gonna be that constant torque B along the length of it for this assembly here. And similarly, we have TA for this assembly here. So using that, we can understand that here on the F side, we're gonna to have to consider this assembly here. So we have TB and the length of that shaft, which is gonna be 0.75 meters. And we have G, J, which luckily is going to be constant in our case. So those are going to nicely cancel out eventually. On the opposite side, we have T, A. But we cannot forget that there is a 2 for that relationship that we just derived. So we have T, A, the length of that shaft, which is 1.5 meters, over G, J. Now, once again, we're going to be nicely solving for one of these variables. If we decide to solve for TB, we're going to be left with the relationship of TB is equal to 4TA. And once again, we're going to be plugging this back into another formula that we have already solved for previously, which is this one right here. So doing so, we are going to finally be working in terms of one variable. Plugging that in, we have a negative 2. 4TA 
subbing that out, and then the 500. Solving for TA, you're going to be left with that 500. Bringing this over, you have a positive 8 plus the 1. That is going to leave you with 9, which is going to end up equaling 55.6 Newton meters. And then similarly, you can now take TA and plug this back into uh, this formula, for example. And once you do that, you're going to be left with TB, which is equal to 222.2 Newton meters. So that's two of your answers here. And the last one, it wants theta E. And we know how to solve this. We already have the variables for it. We have to consider, obviously, this is centered here once again. So we have TA, the length of AE, over GJ. And this is pretty much just wanting us to get the G and the J involved, the shearing modulus and the polar moment of inertia. So plugging in these values that we previously solved for, we have 55.6 Newton meters times the length, which is 1.5 meters. Shearing modulus for A36 steel is going to be 75 times 10 to the 9. And that's going to be in newtons per meter squared. Our radius of the shaft, which is different from the radius we were talking about in the gears, which is 0 0.025 in our case. So here in our formula, we have radius. So we just have to take 0, 0, 025, put it over 2, and then to the power of 4, which will leave you with a final answer for theta at E of 0 0.028 radians.